So here's the first of many linear systems that we'll solve. This one is actually a very simple system, but we'll dwell on it quite a bit and then move much more quickly through subsequent examples. Now when you look at this notation, you should keep in mind that all it really represents is this decomposition problem. And this is just an efficient way of writing this. And it's a very nice way because it groups all of the important information together. And it organizes the unknowns into a very neat column, which is also very convenient. And especially so after we're introduced to matrix multiplication. And you should also keep in mind that this decomposition problem is equivalent to this linear system. Sometimes it's a useful perspective. So whereas we're solving this, which is equivalent to this, we will never write linear systems in this form or in this form. We'll always write our linear systems in this very efficient form, but we'll still talk about decomposing the right hand side as a linear combination of the columns of this matrix. So what I'm about to do is erase this portion and then talk about solving this system. When we write down solutions of linear systems, we use the same format for the unknown as they appear in the question. So we write x, y, z, and t as a column, then put the equal sign, and then capture the solution as a column as well with corresponding values. Now, of course, this is only part of the template because we'll have to deal with the linear dependence among the columns. So you must keep thinking of this problem as a problem in decomposition that I erased. I may have erased it, but that is really the problem we're solving. And this is just a more convenient way of writing it, but it's only more convenient when you get used to it. And so far, you may not be used to it, so give it some time. So what makes this system particularly easy? Well, it's these two columns. These two columns are so simple because of the zeros in them that it's very easy to decompose any other vector from R2 as a linear combination of these columns. In particular, the vector on the right hand side is easily seen to be 8 of this column and 11 of this column. And then you don't have to take any of these columns. So what we need is x needs to be 8, y needs to be 11, z can be 0, and t can be 0. So one of the solutions is 8, 11, 0, 0. And the interpretation of this is that x equals 8, y equals 11, z equals 0, and t equals 0. This is just one solution to the system, and it actually has a name. It's called a particular solution. A particular solution. Very important term and very much deserves to be written down. A particular solution. Just one of the solutions. And as we'll discuss, you have great freedom in choosing which particular solution to use. And we just took advantage of these two very convenient columns to come up with one of them. So now the question is, is this solution unique? And the answer is, of course not. We're solving a decomposition problem and the vectors on the left are linearly dependent. Linear dependence immediately implies lack of uniqueness. There are two ways to see that the vectors on the left are linearly dependent, the general way and the specific way. According to the general way of reasoning, we have four vectors in a two-dimensional space. The space is two-dimensional because all of these vectors live in R2, the set of pairs of numbers. And this space is two-dimensional. So we have four vectors in a two-dimensional space. And when we have more vectors than there are dimensions, the vectors are necessarily linearly dependent. And because we have four vectors in a two-dimensional space, they're probably linearly dependent in more than one way. In fact, they'll be linearly dependent in two different ways. So that's the general way of reasoning. The specific way of reasoning is to simply point out how one of the vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. And once again, the simplicity of these vectors is extremely helpful because you can easily see that the third column is four of the first column 
plus 5 of the second. So to repeat, 4 of the first columns, four, excuse me, 4 of the first column plus 5 of the second column equals the third column. So our goal is to come up with a non-trivial linear combination that equals 0. And of course, this linear relationship is the key to that non-trivial linear combination. So here's how you would obtain that non-trivial linear combination. You would take, let me use chalk of a different color, you would use 4 of this column and 5 of this column. That would produce the third column because 4 of this column plus 5 of this column equals the third column. So if you take minus 1 of the third column, that would cancel this linear combination of the first two. And then you would not take any of the last column. So to review, 4 of the first column plus 5 of the second column minus 1 of the third column to cancel the linear combination of the first two will produce the zero vector, zero, zero, the zero column. So this is the non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. And we can add this non-trivial linear combination in any proportion to the solution that we have already found. So we will write it as a column. 4, 5, 4, 5, negative 1, 0. And what this does, by adding these proportions of columns to our solution, we are not altering the result of the linear combination. So these columns in proportions captured by this expression will still produce 8 and 11 because this is basically adding 0. This is adding a fancy 0. So we're not changing the value of the would-be linear combination, but we are changing its coefficients. So that's why adding this helps us capture all the possible solutions to this equation. So before we move any further, let's make sure that what we have here is an expression that does produce solutions to the system by taking various values of alpha. Well, if we take alpha equals zero, we'll just get this combination, 8, 11, 0, 0, and we know that produces what we want on the right-hand side. So let's take something a little bit more interesting. Let's take minus two. Uh, I picked minus two just, just so that we have some cancellation and maybe some simple numbers. So taking minus two will, will result as, let's do it in our heads, zero, one, two, zero. Zero, one, two, zero. So that tells me that taking zero of this, one of this, two of this, and zero of this columns, in other words, one of this column plus two of this column will produce 8, 11, the right-hand side. And in fact, you can see that it does. One of this column plus two of this column. Okay, maybe if it was a little bit difficult to listen to all these numbers in your head without writing them down, let's pick another value of alpha and write it down. Uh, let's pick the value minus one. Minus one, so when alpha equals minus one, the solution that we have is 4, 6, 1, 0, which is telling us that 4 of this column, 6 of this column, 1 of this column, and none of this column should produce 8, 11. Let's see if it does. In the first row, we have 4 plus 4 equals 8. Great. In the second column, we have 0 plus 6 plus 5 plus 0 equals 11. Works again, six, 6 from here plus 5 from here equals 11. So once again, 4, 6, 1, 0 is a solution to this system. So what we're seeing is that as we expected, this expression for various values of alpha keeps producing combinations of numbers that are a solution to this system. All of that is by design. It's not really a surprise. We're just doing a sanity check and everything seems to be working out. So now let me erase all of the stuff that's not central to our solution and talk about the other dependence among the columns. And of course, the other dependence 
comes from this column because this column is also easily expressed as a linear combination of these two. And what this column is, is of course 7 of the first column plus 11 of the second. So how do we translate it into a linear combination that equals 0? Well, we're going to take 7 of the first column, 11 of the second column, none of the third column. So far, this linear combination equals the fourth column. So if we take minus 1 of the fourth column, now we have a linear combination 7, 11, 0, negative 1. That equals the 0 column. So we have another non-trivial linear combination that equals 0. And we have to add it to the solution. So plus beta 7, 11, 0, negative 1. Okay, and that's it. This is the complete solution to our linear system. So I will now make quite a few observations about this solution. Number one, it has a very important name. The solution, uh, the, or maybe the expression that captures all possible solutions to the system is called the general solution. So this solution combined is called, let's see where I have space, right here, general it's known as the general solution. And as you can see, the general solution consists of a particular solution plus, and what this is, is the elements of the null space. In fact, it's an expression that captures the entire null space. So what this is, is the null space, which we denote by the letter N. So the general solution always equals a particular solution plus the null space. Okay, the next question that might arise is, well, you picked 8, 11, 0, 0 for your particular solution. But what I'm seeing is that the right-hand side, because I'm seeing 7, 11 here, and 1, 0 here, is just the first column plus the fourth column. That's how I see 8, 11. So I would have written, not 8, 11, 0, 0, but one of this column and one of this column. So 1, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1. And that would be an entirely different expression that, by the same logic, should also work. So which one is right? So the answer is both are right. So now we've zoomed out and we have both solutions on the board. And the system itself moved over here. Now on the bottom we have the solution that we came up with together. And on top we have the solution that you may have suggested. And they're clearly different. So how can two mathematical expressions that are clearly not equivalent both be correct? Well that's because the solution to a linear system is not really the expression per se, but it's the set of vectors that it represents. It's the set of linear combinations of these columns that this expression represents. And it will turn out that these two expressions, even though they're different, actually represent the same sets of vectors or the same sets of linear combinations of these columns. So how do we make sure of that? Well, we'll pick a vector from this mix and we'll make sure that it's also captured by this expression. And then vice versa. And you will see that relatively easily anything that's in here can also be seen to be in here and the other way around. So let's start with a very simple example. The simplest example I can think of is take both alpha and beta equals zero. Then this expression evaluates simply to one, zero, zero, one. And is one, zero, zero, one in this mix? Well, of course it is. Just take alpha equals zero, beta equals minus one. Then you have eight minus seven, one, 11 minus 11, zero, zero minus zero, zero and zero minus minus one is one. So that evaluates to one zero zero one, which shows that one zero zero one is in this expression, but it is also in this expression as well. Now let's consider a slightly more complicated example. How about taking alpha equals one and beta equals one? 
Well, then we have 12. Let's write it down. 16, negative 1, and 0. Okay, so this combination is captured by this expression. And you can also make sure that it's a solution to this system, which it will be similarly to a couple examples we considered previously. But now our task is to make sure that it's also part of this expression. And of course it is. We simply have to take alpha equals 1, and beta equals 0. And then we have 12, 16, negative 1, 0, and so forth. So we more or less see that any vector captured by this expression is also captured by this expression. Let's go in the opposite direction and show that every vector captured by this expression is also captured by this expression. So let's take alpha and beta equals 0 first. Then we have 8, 11, 0, 0. Is it in this mix? Well, of course it is. Just take alpha equals 0 and beta equals 1. And then we have 8, 11, 0, and then 1 plus negative 1, 0. 8, 11, 0, 0. So once again, a vector that's in this mix is also in this mix. And just to make sure, let's take alpha equals 1 and beta equals 1, and then we have Oh, large numbers. Well, that's okay. 19, let might as well align them. 19, 27, minus 1 and minus 1. Okay, so this combination is in this expression. If you'd like to, please make sure that it's also a solution to the system. I'm sure it will be, although the numbers are pretty large, but I'm sure everything will work out. That's just how things work. Now let's see if it's in part of this expression. What alpha and beta should we take to obtain these numbers? Well, let's see. Well, how about alpha equals 1 and beta equals 2? I think that'll do it. Let's see what we have. 1 plus 4 plus 14. That's 19. 0 plus 5 plus 22, that's 27. 0 minus 1 plus 0, that's minus 1. And finally, 1 plus 0 minus 2, that's minus 1. So we once again see that a vector, and that's in this expression, is also in this expression. So that's the sense in which these expressions are equivalent. They're not equivalent as mathematical formulas, but they do capture the exact same sets of vectors. And where have we seen something like this before? That two completely different expressions actually represent the exact same object. Oh yes, when we were talking about the equation of the straight line. Let me remind you of what we saw then, and then we'll decide whether that situation was analogous to this situation. What we saw in that discussion is expressions of the kind p plus alpha a, which is an expression similar to this one, except here we also have beta, another vector, so we'll get to that. But let's remember what this kind of expression corresponded to geometrically. Well, it corresponded, excuse me, to a straight line. Let me draw the vector p. as well as the vector a. And if these are the vectors p and a, then p plus 0a is the, the vector p itself. p plus 1a would be a vector that ends up right here. p plus 2a is a vector that ends up right here. p minus 1a would be a vector with a tip right around here. So all of these vectors represent a straight line. So we can say, that this expression corresponds to a straight line. If we want it to be more wordy, we would say that this expression corresponds to vectors whose tips lie on a line that doesn't pass through the origin. In fact, it's shifted by the vector p. So this is a straight line shifted by the vector p. And the beauty was that in, the pl in place of the vector p, we could use any vector that lies on that line. For example, we could easily represent the same line by 
changing p in the, exp in the expression to q. Now, if we consider all vectors of the kind q plus alpha a, what we have here is a completely different expression because q is not the same as p. Analogously, this is not the same as this. But of course, q plus alpha a, by the same logic, represents the exact same line because the line is infinite in both directions and this is the starting configuration for the line. It doesn't matter whether we're shifted by p or whether we're shifted by q. We end up with the exact same straight line. So these two expressions are completely different, yet they represent the exact same object. Although if you want to find the same point, for example this one, it used to correspond to alpha equals one. Now it corresponds to alpha equals a quarter. So I see a complete analogy between this and this. So what does adding a second vector do? Well, it changes the analogy a little bit. Now we have to go from a straight line to a plane. So when I see an expression like this, the analogy that I have in my mind involves a vector p and two vectors, a and b, and of course all possible linear combinations of a and b represent the entire plane that lies in which these two vectors lie. And then we're invited to shift it by the vector p. So what we have now is a shifted plane. And once again, if we consider expressions of this kind and want to capture the same plane, it doesn't matter which vector within the plane we take. It could be this vector p or it could have been this vector q, although it's not quite as long. Let me take this prop. So it could have been that vector p or this vector q or any other vector that lies within that shifted plane. So my geometric analogy for an expression like this is a shifted plane. And I would like to point out one more time that analogy is a very subjective sort of thing. If you think that something is analogous, then it's analogous. If you don't see the analogy, well then it's not analogous. However, I think that in this case, the parallel between our situation and the geometric picture is so striking that the analogy is certainly there. And we have a perfect insight into the sort of situations where different expressions represent the exact same object. The exact same object here being the set of linear combinations that satisfy this decomposition problem. And I would also like to point out that in the case of two vectors, the situation is richer than in the case of a single vector. That's because in addition to arbitrariness in choosing the particular solution, or in geometric language, the shift vector, we also have great arbitrariness in choosing these vectors. The only requirement being that they adequately represent the null space. After all, this, and this is the null space. And in our solutions, we chose the same two vectors, but we could have chosen different vectors here as long as they span the exact same null space, as long as they represent the basis for the same null space. So the takeaway is that one and the same solution can look very different. Not only can the shift vector be arbitrarily chosen among many, so can these vectors that correspond to the null space. So two solutions that look completely different, or two expressions rather, that look completely different may actually represent the exact same set of solutions. So now I think there is only one thing left to do with this system, and that's to reconcile the way you would have done it in high school with the way we now do it at the more advanced level with greater geometric and algebraic insight.